Sifu, the newly released beat em up game developed by Slowclap, has been out for over a week now, and it can be. A little difficult? That's why I'm going to share with you some of the tips and tricks that I've learned from having my ass beat over and over and over again on how to deal with every enemy and boss so hopefully you can also progress a bit further into the game. I'll assume that you know about the basic mechanics and defensive options available to you in this video. If you're not, I'd recommend checking out the tips at the bottom left of the detective board and if you have to, replay the prologue as well. The game can explain these things way better than I can, and it also looks great to boot. I'll begin by talking about some of the general combat tips, and then dive deeper into each and every enemy afterwards. Timestamps in the description below. First, I'll talk about some tips for dealing with mobs in Sifu. The first and most important tip is pay attention to and take advantage of your environment. If you're standing on an elevated platform like an upper floor of a building, you can very quickly clear out groups of enemies by simply yeeting them off the edge with a push. This is especially helpful considering enemies have a chance of becoming Super Saiyan when you attempt a takedown on them. So if you don't want to deal with that, just send them over the edge. This goes without saying, but never allow yourself to be cornered. It's fine if you are surrounded, but always make sure you have some space to maneuver around. The last thing you want when getting overwhelmed is to have your back to the wall and nowhere to run. I also want to talk about my recommendation for enemy prioritization. The order of enemy type I recommend taking down is first the heavies, then the common thugs, and finally the elite enemies in the order of whoever has the lowest health or structure to the highest. This is because the heavy is the only enemy type that has a grab, which can't be blocked or parried, and you probably don't want to deal with that when you're busy dealing with another enemy. The common thugs are second on the list because they can be taken down with low effort and time, so you can finally focus your attention on the elite enemies once you're done, which are the hardest to deal with because they're generally pretty tanky and have some unique attack patterns, which I will talk about in a bit. You should also avoid fighting multiple elite enemies at once whenever possible since it can be pretty overwhelming trying to deal with their attacks at the same time. Sometimes it is inevitable, but I will talk about this a bit more when we go in depth into some of the enemies. Next, I want to talk about one of the moves that you get by default, the sweep. The sweep, well, it's pretty good in it. If this wasn't a default move, then my number one tip would have been to get this skill ASAP. It's just that good. It's a great tool to use against mobs since you can temporarily remove an enemy from the battlefield for a few seconds while you thin out their numbers. From my testing, it's also the move with the highest structure damage per hit, and you can also get two free hits as a follow up on top of that, so it's super effective for building up the enemy's structure quickly. It's especially helpful when trying to get the wound ending, so if you're having a hard time and you haven't been getting into the habit of using the sweep, you definitely should. One last tip that isn't really essential to getting better at the game, but I think it's a pretty fun one, is about this little focus move, Cowboy. You unlock this move by going to the third floor in the map the museum and investigate this mask right here to add it to your detective board. This is a reference to the developer's previous game, Absolver, which had a move with the same name and it's as effective as it looks. But in Sifu, it has more uses than just being an easter egg. Yes, it doesn't do any damage to the enemy when you use it, but it does max out your score multiplier, so this is really helpful if you're trying to unlock shrine skills such as parry impact, which requires a very high score, but it will pay off big time in the long run. These are the most common enemy type you're going to see throughout the game, and their movesets are incredibly simple to understand and deal with. They can either do a triple punch combo with slow windup or a slightly faster double punch combo. Because their health and structure are so low, you can probably just sneeze in their general direction or do whatever really and they'll drop. But my recommended approach is to parry one of their attacks and follow up with a quick counter. 
and this should be more than enough for the vast majority of them. There are a few variations to this enemy type with extra health and structure along with a few additional moves. Some of them have a jumping punch attack that can't be interrupted and links into a 2 hit punch combo. Some of them can also opt to go for a punch, kick, kick combo instead of the standard triple punch combo. The toughest enemies of this type however, gain access to a guard break kick that can be dangerous if you weren't expecting it. They can choose to throw this out at the end of their combos whenever they wish, so be sure to keep an eye out. You don't want to be blocking these because they deal a massive amount of structure damage and suddenly you're now one step closer to being reunited with your dad. To deal with this move, you can either parry it or avoid and punish them immediately after. But in general, the same strategy of parrying their punches should still work well. Every enemy of this type can also pick up weapons such as bottles, bats, and knives to use in combat. For bats, 9 out of 10 times, they will go for the standard double swing combo with the second swing being a guard break. The easiest way to deal with this is to parry the second swing that has a pretty predictable timing, which will interrupt the combo and you're basically free to go ham on them. Of course, you can also avoid if you're not confident in your parry timing and that should also be fine. Very rarely, they may go for a poke, an upswing to a downswing combo, or an upswing to a sweep, which may catch you off guard, but from my experience, I've barely ever seen them use these after dozens of runs, so you probably don't have to worry too much about these, just know that they do exist. For knives, they also have a standard 2 hit combo that can be countered in very much the same way. However, on top of that, they also have a 2 hit quick strike combo that they use equally frequently. After either of these, they have a high chance of following up with a guard break kick or a stab, so be sure to keep an eye out for those. Note that if you want to disarm any enemy except for bosses, you can do so by simply knocking them down or pushing them and they will immediately drop their weapon, though this also applies to you so keep that in mind. Overall, the thug is a fairly straightforward enemy type that you should be able to deal with easily as long as you watch for their attacks and stop them dead in their tracks. You first meet this enemy type in the first map and you'll be seeing them throughout the game. Despite how they look, the heavy enemy type is surprisingly easy to take down. The structure bar isn't that large and even though they generally don't get staggered by your attacks, they also don't block so all of your attacks deal full damage. Their signature and most dangerous move is the grab. It has a deceptively long range and it can only be dodged or avoided. It can be a little tricky to get the timing down. Personally, I time it by listening for the sound effect, wait for about half a second, and then avoid. If you're more of a visual player, you can avoid the moment they lower their heads and start lunging forwards, though it can be hard to see at point blank range. Other than the grab, their go-to is the swipe to two fast swipes to a guard break swipe combo. Once you see it coming, you can simply parry or avoid them all since they're quite predictable with the combo. They also have a handful of other guard break moves that they'll occasionally throw out, but these are slow enough that you can probably just avoid or parry on reaction. You can use any attack against these guys, but I recommend using fast attacks because the last thing you want when they're winding up for a grab is to be stuck in a long animation, unable to avoid. This is going to be a recurring theme in the video, but the sweep is very effective at building up their structure very quickly. The heavy might seem like an intimidating enemy type at first, but once you've got a grabs on the grab timing and the predictable combo and realize how squishy they really are, you shouldn't have any problems dealing with them. The elite thug can be a scripted part of the level, but most of the time, you're going to see an enemy become one when they manage to fight off your instant takedown. On top of all the moves that the strongest common thug can do, these elite thugs also have a new jumping kick attack followed by the sweep, both are guard breaks, so try to avoid or parry if you see them coming. Okay, so it's basically a common thug with a new attack and slightly tougher. What's the big deal? I'll just counter them the same way I do with those guys, right? Well, see, the main thing that makes them more difficult to deal with is the fact that most of their attacks can no longer be interrupted which means there are way less openings for your attacks to go through. 
Couple this with a large health and structure bar and having to deal with other enemies at the same time and it can be really frustrating. Like all elite enemies, I recommend leaving these guys till last after you've cleared out all of the common thugs and heavies. Despite what I said earlier, the main strategy to deal with these guys is similar to how you deal with the common thugs. But instead of just parrying or avoiding one attack and you can immediately send them to heaven, you're going to have to do it for their entire combo chain multiple times to take them down. Because they don't have a lot of openings for you to get some good hits in, it's important to try and go for the most efficient combos. And you guessed it, the sweep is a great tool for this end. But if you're struggling with the timing of their attacks, there is another strategy, and that is to just give them a weapon. Now I know it sounds crazy, but hear me out. Once they have a weapon, essentially all of their combos are replaced with the common flux basic weapon combos, which are significantly more predictable and easier to deal with. Note that they will still have access to the new kick combo, but that's pretty much the only thing you have to worry about as opposed to their entire moveset. When you get to the tower, you'll come across this room where you're forced to fight two of these enemies at the same time. This encounter can be quite challenging, so my tip for you here is to focus one of them down and split them up whenever you can. You can quickly kill one of them by throwing them off the balcony if you get the chance. The sweep, once again, is great for temporarily disabling one of them so you can focus on the other one. Just stay calm and deal with their attacks one at a time, and hopefully, you'll walk away from this fight in one piece. You first meet this type of enemy in the second level who appears as a mini boss. These are some of the hardest enemies to deal with in the game because they require you to pay full attention to their movement if you want to survive their attacks. The bread and butter combo and probably one that trips up a lot of new players is the high kick high kick sweep combo. If you see the first kick coming since it has a fairly slow startup, you can parry the entire combo for some structure damage. But if you're not confident in your parry timing, you can also block the first kick, then avoid the next two and immediately punish them after. Other notable combos are the elbow strike to a sweep and the kick to a double punch combo, which I highly recommend parrying because if you blocked or avoided this, they will likely follow up with one of the most dangerous moves, the hammer kick. I do not recommend trying to parry this move because worst case scenario, you block it and take a ton of structure damage and you also have to deal with the follow-up kick which is possibly enough to break your structure and that's not good. And best case, you successfully parry and they take some structure damage but you still have to worry about dealing with the follow-up kick. The risk and trade-off just isn't worth it because of how much damage you can take from messing up in my opinion. The easiest and safest strategy is to simply avoid it and punish them afterwards. Also be careful when standing on the opposite side of a vaultable surface when facing them because the vault is another form of the hammer kick and it does just as much damage. There's a very dangerous variation of this enemy type and they can be seen near the end of the level, the museum. Their movesets are essentially the same but not only do you have to fight two of them at once, their shoes are blades so all of their kicks are now much more dangerous. The best tips I can give you for this encounter is to hold on to your weapon for as long as possible so you can block a few hits without taking damage and take down one of them as soon as you can using any means at your disposal. Once again, the sweep is a very powerful tool, use it. To recap, the capoeira can be a headache to deal with at first, but once you understand the high-low mix-up combos and how to deal with the deadly hammer kick, you should have a better chance at surviving the crazy offense. You also first encounter these enemies in the second level. These enemies generally have fairly high health and structure along with highly damaging moves. Their most common combo is the 3 hit palm strike with the final hit being a guard break. The best way to deal with this is to simply parry all 3 strikes. Now, I understand that it can be pretty intimidating with how they push you halfway across the map with each strike, but just watch the movement closely Wait until the moment just before the palm makes contact with you and you should be able to parry the strikes reliably. If you struggle to get the parry timing right, you can try to avoid but I don't recommend this because occasionally they can end the combo with a sweep instead. It doesn't happen often but it's not rare enough to disregard it completely. Another combo that they like to use and can be reliably avoided is the kick to double flying kick to a sweep. If you see them start a combo with a kick, 
they will always end it with a sweep, so it is perfectly safe to avoid if you don't want to risk pairing. There are a few more quick strike combos that can end in a sweep or a push that they might also use, but from what I can tell, they will only use these after they avoid or parry your attacks, so if you don't want to deal with these, you can simply let them take the initiative. This enemy type can also make use of vertical surfaces such as a wall or a pillar to deliver a wall bounce attack, so be mindful when fighting them in enclosed areas. This is also the only enemy type that can use a staff as a weapon, and you generally see them on mini bosses. For the most part, their combos are fairly straightforward, a series of 4 hit combos ending in a guard break attack. The only one that you need to pay special attention to is this combo, 3 high hitting attacks ending with a sweep. It has a fairly distinct animation, so you should be familiar after seeing it a few times. But other than that, everything else can be simply avoided or parried without much of a problem. If you've tried to collect all of the clues for the detective board, you've probably come across this room in the club. This room has two enemies of this type, similar to the area immediately before Sean's boss fight. The difference is this room is much smaller, and both of them are really, really tough. This is one of the hardest non-boss encounters in the game, and it is very easy to be cornered and comboed by both of them at the same time. There aren't really any tips I can give you to make this fight easier other than focusing down the guy first because he dies slightly faster. It really just comes down to parrying the moves one by one and trying not to get cornered. Once there's only one of them left standing, the fight becomes a lot more manageable. This enemy type first appears in the level The Museum, and is the last non-boss enemy type in the game. They have a lot of health and structure, but compared to the other enemy types, their moves are fairly straightforward. Their go-to is the double punch to a guard break punch combo. The final hit is a grab attack if it connects, which deals a fair amount of damage, so try not to get hit or have your structure broken by this. The best way to deal with this combo is to parry the heavy punch, which will briefly stun them for some quick damage and shouldn't prove too difficult since these guys are pretty predictable with it. If you get hit by the first few attacks, don't panic, just try to parry or avoid the final hit and you'll be fine. Another attack that they throw out fairly often is a kick that can combo into either a strong kick or the last two hits of the punch combo. Because of this, it can be quite tricky to counter the strong kick reliably since you have to also worry about the much faster punch combo, and it doesn't help that the startup animation for both options look pretty similar. My recommendation is to keep holding down the block button for a second after the first kick, and if the punch isn't coming out, then try to parry or avoid the strong kick. This is also the only enemy type other than the heavy that has a grab. However, they will only throw this out after parrying your attacks, so you don't really have to worry about this unless you're actively attacking them. That's also why I would recommend leaving them for last when dealing with mobs, especially when considering their large health and structure bar. And that's about everything there is to this enemy type. Like I said, these guys may seem intimidating at first, and they can absolutely destroy you if you let your focus slip. But once you're familiar with their moves, it should be straightforward enough for you to take them down. This is the first boss in the game and he is fairly straightforward. He will always start the fight with a rush to a jumping hammer kick. This move has aimbot so don't bother trying to run from it. Simply avoid when you see him drop just above your head and you get a free punish window. You may also see him use this move throughout the fight if there is some distance between you so be sure to apply the same strategy for some easy damage. His bread and butter is the double kick combo. He can either end this combo with another fast kick or a slower reverse roundhouse. I don't recommend trying to pair this combo because the timing of each attack is quite unpredictable so you may be at risk of eating some hits. The easiest way to deal with this is to simply avoid after the double kick and it should cover both options. Another combo he likes to use is the high back kick to a reverse roundhouse. If you see him do a high back kick, he will always always follow up with a reverse roundhouse, so you definitely want to punish him every time he does it. He also has a sweep that he can throw out whenever, so I do not recommend avoiding his first attacks unless you know exactly what it is. If you're unsure, just block the first hit and deal with subsequent hits afterwards. 
He also has some other moves such as the vaulting kick or the wall bounce kick or the sliding sweep that he will generally only use if you're trying to get away from him. I recommend staying close to him at all times so you won't have to worry about these moves. In phase 2, he retains all of his moves from phase 1 and also gains access to a handful of new ones. Most notable is the ambush attack, which he begins the phase with. He will jump away and disappear for a few seconds before re-emerging and delivering a guard break attack. This move may seem scary at first, but simply wait for him to jump out and avoid right before he lands on the ground and you will have an opening to do whatever you want. He does this move quite often throughout the fight, so be sure to punish him every time. A new move that is his prior mother in phase 2 is the double knife slash. It's fairly easy to parry this move since the startup is quite obvious. Simply block the moment you see his arm move forward and you should be able to get the parry. He also has a variation to this combo where he does a dramatic spin before slashing. Unfortunately, this version of the slash can't be interrupted with a parry so you will have to deal with the rest of the combo. Another new move is the guard break double slash. These can hit for a lot of damage but the startup is fairly slow so you can simply wait for the flash and avoid twice quickly. He is also able to spawn bamboos whenever he wants so he will have access to moves such as the wall bounce kick at any moment. But again he only ever use these moves when you're far away so you don't really have to worry about it as long as you remain relatively close. For those of you attempting the Wuda ending, he doesn't really have that much health so try not to attack him too much. If you want to attack, try to limit yourself to weaker attacks and the sweep since it does a lot of structure damage for a single hit. But other than that, parry as often as you can, pay attention to the attacks I've highlighted and you should be able to break Fajar the botanist without much of a problem. So according to some statistics I've seen, apparently a lot of people are struggling with the club and presumably with the boss. And I completely get it. His attacks have long range and they do a ton of health and structure damage. But that's what this video is for and hopefully you'll have a better understanding on how to deal with Sean the fighter after this section. Sean has two basic combos that he loves to throw out over and over again. The first is the horizontal combo with him swinging staff around head level 3 times in a row. The second is the vertical combo with him swinging the staff up and down also 3 times in a row. The final hit of both these combos are guard breaks so you do not want to be blocking them. The horizontal combo has a very rhythmic timing to it with each hit coming out like clockwork whereas the vertical combo is slightly more unpredictable with the final hit coming out slower compared to the first two. My recommended method for dealing with this is to simply block the first hit and then avoid the rest. Yes, his attacks deal quite a bit of structure damage on block, but you should be able to regain that amount after avoiding the follow-up attacks. There are some stats to the right that you can use to make blocking a bit safer as well. You can also just parry his attacks like I'm doing on the screen as well. Yes, you will take a bunch of structure damage and it won't interrupt his combo or give you an opening to get some damage in, but you will be building his structure bar pretty quickly. Also one tip in case you didn't know, similar to Sekiro, the structure bar will increase but will never break as long as you parry, regardless of how many attacks you parry or how strong they are. He may also approach you with some moves such as the deceptively fast staff poke or the shoulder check before doing one of his combos, so be sure to keep your guard up to not get caught by surprise. In phase 2, the same strategy of dealing with his two combos should still apply. I know blocking the flaming staff may seem scary, but trust me, it doesn't do any damage on block and the structure damage should also be the exact same as phase 1, so don't be intimidated. The new move that seems to be the bane for a lot of players is the sweep which he really, really likes to throw out during phase 2. Because he only sweeps at the beginning of a combo, Blocking will cover all of the options, so you won't even have to think about this move. He also has another move where he slams his staff directly downwards, which deals a lot of damage on hit. He can combo into this from the sweep or after his standard 3 hit combos, so try not to get caught off guard. 
Earlier, I said that pairing his attacks is one option to deal with his combos. Well, if you're going for the Wilder ending, I'm afraid you don't have much of a choice. He has a bit more health compared to the Modernist, but it's still not that much for you to simply go ham on him and break his structure twice without pairing. Again, if you have to attack, the sweep is your best option. It also has the added benefit of giving you some breathing room to recover your structure while he's on the ground. Despite how oppressive his attacks might seem, hopefully I've given you some ideas on how to turn the tables and eventually take down Sean the Fighter. After your long and arduous journey through the museum, you will finally confront Kuroki the artist. And the first phase of her boss fight is arguably the hardest boss fight in the entire game, second only to the final boss in my opinion. One tip I can give, albeit a very obvious one, is I highly recommend taking a weapon with you so you can at least block a few of her attacks without taking damage. One notable combo is a 4 hit mix up. It will always be a low, high, low, high combo at a steady rhythm, so this is one of the easier combo to predict. Note that if you decide to get some hits in after reading this combo, she can also follow up with a really hard to read combo that even now, I'm still not sure how to deal with, so make sure to only go in if you know that she will not do the follow up. She also has another 4 hit combo, but this one is simply just 4 consecutive high attacks. So if you see her do a combo that's two high attacks in a row, you can be certain that the rest of the combo is going to be high attacks. Another mix up that she can do is 5 hit combo that goes high, low, low, high, and low. But unlike the other mix up, this one is much faster so I would only recommend trying to get in if you're really good at reacting to this combo. One move that she likes to follow up this combo with is an overhead slam, which is relatively easy to react to and you do want to react to this. This is one of the only moves that's completely safe to counter, so if you see her throw this out, make sure to avoid and punish her for it. One last notable attack that I want to cover is her Beyblade move. She generally only uses this move when you're a fair distance away, and she'll rush towards you while spinning her blades around. This move can last for a very long time until you avoid, block, parry, or get hit by this about 4 to 5 times. You can either run away until she stops, or confront it head on by either evading or parrying. So note that the timing can be quite tough to get right as you need to wait for her to get as close as possible and spam either option. Now onto some general tips that might be helpful in this fight. This is one of the only fights where I don't recommend parrying, simply because it is way too risky and it's really difficult to get used to the timing of her attacks. Avoiding and dodging are going to be a lot more reliable in my opinion. Also, try not to stay inside her striking distance since a lot of her attacks are quite unpredictable. Keep your distance, watch for which combo she's going for first, and then you can attempt to challenge her if you want. For the same reason, try not to overcommit. Do whatever damage you can and back off until the next opportunity arises. Once you get to phase 2, the good news is she becomes significantly more manageable. Her moves are completely different compared to phase 1, but they're also much more straightforward. Her most common and frankly only combo is a 5 hit combo where she goes in for a quick slash, followed by a kick, and then 3 more slashes. It may take a little bit to get used to the timing, but once you figure it out, you can simply avoid or parry the entire combo. Note that while you do take damage if you block the slashes, you won't if you parry. After this combo, she may also follow up with a guard break dropkick, which can be easily avoided or parried since the startup animation is quite predictable. She likes to disengage by jumping backwards and throwing some kunai while in the air. When far away, she can also throw 1-3 kunais at you. To deal with this, simply watch the kunai and dodge when they get close or if you have weapon catch unlocked, you can just grab them out of the air and return the favor. From a distance, she has two different rush attacks to close the gap. The first one is where she does 1-3 to three dashes before rushing in with a slash. I recommend avoiding this to get a small window for some damage, or you can also parry if you want, though you might not get the same window on the parry. The second version is where she stands still and charges before rushing in with a guard break slash. 
I highly recommend parrying this move because it will stop her dead in her tracks, giving you a window to do whatever you want while also doing a good amount of structure damage. The timing for both these moves are the same, simply avoid or parry after you see the flash and you get it every time. And that's all for moves in phase 2. Like I said, very straightforward. The bad news however, is that her health is possibly the lowest of all bosses, which might be a problem if you go for the Wuda ending. If you want to break her structure twice, you will have to be parrying quite a lot of her attacks, which fortunately, shouldn't prove too difficult given how few of them she has. Despite having a very challenging phase 1, once you manage to overcome that and become familiar with her limited options in phase 2, Kuroki the artist shouldn't be too high of a hurdle to overcome. After overcoming all the challenges the tower throws at you, you finally face off against Jin Feng, the CEO. And frankly speaking, she is among one of the easier bosses in the game. Don't get me wrong, if you are unfamiliar with her moves and don't know how to deal with them, you can absolutely get destroyed. But once you realize how simple her moves really are, you'll be able to read her like a book. So let's talk about her combos, which honestly are just variations of the same combo. Her favorite pattern is high, high, low, which 90% of all her combos are going to follow. When at range, she has a fast and slow combo. For the fast combo, she will do two quick straight attacks before ending with a sweep. For the slow version, she will do a high swing to a straight attack and also ending with a sweep. To deal with these, simply watch the wait and avoid or parry just before they hit. Make sure to always avoid the sweep though so you can close the distance before she recovers. At close range, she will try to push you away or jump back and follow up with an attack. If you get hit, she will always follow up with a sweep. And if you get hit by the sweep, she will always follow up with a smash, so be sure to keep an eye out. And that's really about it for phase 1. Once you pay attention, you'll realize that her moves are incredibly simple and limited. For phase 2, a lot of her moves remain unchanged but are now a little faster. She gets a new variation of the slow combo in which the first swing is now a grab. This is telegraphed quite clearly, so just stay calm and dodge when you see it coming. She also gets a few more combos at close range, such as this one. And this one, which you guessed it, both follow the same high, high, low pattern. There's also another move where she spins and slams her weight down 5 times in a row, which can be dangerous if you're blocking all of them, but the timing is quite predictable so you can probably avoid or parry just fine. If you're trying to get the Wuda ending, you probably shouldn't have too much of a problem since she has quite a bit of health and it's fairly tough to get some clean hits in, so I think it's fine even if you don't worry about parrying too much. So in case there is a problem, I'd recommend parrying her long range moves since they are a bit more predictable and easier to parry compared to a close range one. Despite how challenging the tower may be and her being a second to last boss, once you've recognized her attack patterns and got the timing down, you should have no problem having Jin Feng, the CEO, go into retirement. At the end of it all, after 5 levels and 4 bosses, you're finally standing in front of Ye, the leader, who you haven't seen since you played as him in the prologue. And just as you saw back then, he has access to all of your attacks, including everything on the skill tree. This is a mirror match that will ultimately depend on your ability to look for openings to attack and survive his, or rather, your moves. So unfortunately, I don't really have any quick tips I can give you for you to go in and just beat his ass immediately. Since Yang has by far and beyond the fastest attacks in the entire game, being able to react to his moves on the fly is crucial, and that is the one thing I can hopefully offer by breaking down his patterns in this section. One of his favorite combos is the forward kick to the full heavy attack combo, which you're probably already quite familiar with. Yang really, 
really loves to use this combo, so be very comfortable with the timing of each hit. Another combo that he really likes is the crotch punch into the backhand into the heavy kick. 9 out of 10 times he will go for this combo after he avoids your attacks. This combo comes out very fast and if you get hit, you'll likely eat the full combo so be sure to keep your cards up. If you see him sidestep, he will always go in for a flurry which can and should be parried for a lot of structure damage. And it also makes you look like a badass so make sure to do it. For phase 2, his moves remain fairly similar though there are some important differences which I will be talking about. For his favorite forward kick combo, he would no longer do the full heavy attack chain and would instead skip straight to the last two hits after the forward kick. Another change is after a sidestep, he is now less likely to do the flurry. Instead, he will more likely go for a punch that combos into either a high kick or a sweep. This is his high-low mix-up combo and it can be quite difficult to tell which option he'll go for. If you don't want to deal with this, try dodging backwards after you block his punch. You won't get an opening to hit him, but you also won't have to worry about getting hit by either option. A new combo he got for phase 2 begins with a guard break punch into another punch and ends with a 3 hit flurry. Similar to the flurry in phase 1, if you see him throw this out, try to parry it for some good structure damage. But the biggest addition he got in this phase is his tiger claw rush. After dodging backwards, he'll charge up and rush forward doing 3 consecutive guard break strikes. This is a very powerful move. You do not want to block or get hit by this or he will absolutely destroy both your structure and health bar. Watch his movement carefully and quickly avoid 3 times in a row the moment he rushes forward and you have an opening to do whatever you want. You can also parry it but personally I haven't had much luck with it. And that's all the notable moves you need to know for phase 2. Note that this isn't an exhaustive list of what he can do. Remember. He has access to all of your moves and he will be using them in certain scenarios, so it is important to go through your move list and skill tree to not get caught by surprise. I'm just listing off the options that he frequently goes for from my experience, which will hopefully give you an edge when trying to survive against his attacks. My general recommendation when dealing with his attacks is to always go for parries. Yes, the timing is tighter compared to avoiding, but also you're doing structure damage to him as he's attacking, which is most of the time, so it can add up really quick. This leads into my next tip. I do not recommend being hyper aggressive against Yang. This is because he has a lot of options to punish you after an avoid or parry, which adds an extra layer to the fight that you have to deal with. This is why I recommend parrying, because if you rely solely on avoiding, you have to be aggressive if you want to take him down and you can be sure that Yang won't be making that easy. My general rule of thumb is that if you see him blocking your attack, back off because he's most likely going to parry the next attack and send you to see your dad. One last tip that I can give for those of you going for the wood ending is that Yang has a really large health pool, but if you're still having problems with breaking his structure, try to invest some points into parry impact and you'll be able to get him as long as you parry every once in a while. Just make sure to not get swept up in the adrenaline rush and accidentally execute him when you don't mean to. Yes, I'm speaking from experience. As the final boss, Yang the leader really lives up to his name. He is by far the most powerful enemy in the game, using everything you know against you. But as long as you keep at it, watch for his attack patterns and learn after every death, every failure, and eventually, you should be able to bring him down and show him who's the true Sifu. Hey y'all, it's me, the disembodied voice you've been listening to in this video. As you can probably already tell, this is my very first video that honestly, I just decided to do on a whim. I did not expect this video to be as long and take as much work as it did, but either way, I did it and I hope you guys got something out of it. If you're still here, first of all, thank you so much. It really means a lot to me that you're still watching, even though the video is already over. And second of all, 
How did you even find this video to begin with? What the f- Again, this was just something I decided to do on a whim. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. The next video that I'll make for this channel, whenever that may be, most likely won't be the same format as this one, but if you're interested anyway, maybe subscribe and I would really appreciate that. I'll stop talking now because I really hate listening to my own voice and I've been doing more than enough of that for the past few weeks. So yeah, bye guys.